Today we're going to take a look inside the Hyundai Sonata to see what's inside and how it works. Now instead of reviewing the quality of the plastics inside, the infotainment system, or the size of the cup holders, we're going to be taking a look underneath the car and under the hood to see what it would be like if you had to own and maintain one of these. Now we're going to start under the hood where over here on the passenger side we have Hyundai's 1.6 liter Smart Stream engine. It is a turbocharged four cylinder situated transversely for front wheel drive. Then over here on the driver's side underneath the battery you have an 8 speed automatic transmission. Now this is one of the smaller engine covers I've seen and it's not branded on the top which means that both Hyundai and Kia can use it in their versions of the vehicle. Now we're going to start by taking a look at the air intake system on this engine you can see fresh air is going to be drawn in from the front of the hood here and be sent over down to the air box now one thing I like about this air box is it's super easy to change the air filter it just slides right out like that and then you can slide it back in push these tabs in and put it back down now that filtered air is then going to be sent through this mass airflow sensor and then through this tube down to the turbocharger at the back you can see back here the air is then going to be sent into the turbocharger located over here this here is your electronic wastegate which is going to vent off any extra pressure if you don't need it now this turbocharger is going to use the exhaust flow in order to generate more flow in the air intake stream and pressurize that it's going to send that pressurized air down through the charge pipe which you can see coming down over here into the air to air intercooler now with that air box out of the way it's pretty easy to see the size of this air to air intercooler it just sits by itself there's no fan in front of it or behind it you just have the big pipe that leads up to it and then the big pipe down at the bottom in addition we have our excess bleed pipe that brings air back in here with a controlled valve now taking a look from underneath you can see this big charge pipe that's going to lead up to the air intake to the throttle body you can also see back here this is your air to air intercooler that sits on the first third on the driver's side over here on this side behind the radiator fan is the second third of the front which is taken up by the radiator now that pressurized air is then going to get cooled off and be sent through this drive-by wire throttle body through your map sensor and then into this air intake manifold which is made of a composite plastic before being forced down into the air intake side of the engine head next taking a look at the Sonata's fuel system this is gasoline direct injected only here you've got the direct injection pump which is going to take low pressure fuel coming from the tank and pressurize it now this pump runs off of the exhaust camshaft on the back of the engine here is then going to send that pressurized fuel down this tube over here is then going to come down over here and go into the fuel rail located below this intake manifold before it's injected into the engine at very high pressure directly into the combustion chamber now of course directly injecting gasoline down into the combustion chamber is good for fuel efficiency as well as emissions but the downside to that is after a while the intake valves are going to get gummed up with carbon because on a normal port injected vehicle the injector would sit on top of the airstream here before it goes down into the intake valves to help clean them off. Now taking a look at the top of the engine here from the passenger side, you can see this engine has a double overhead cam. You get the exhaust camshaft on the back there, that drives the turbocharger, and then the intake camshaft over here, and that's all held underneath this plastic valve cover. The engine does take 0W20 weight oil. Now the ignition coils on the top of this engine are located right on the top here which is going to make for very easy spark plug changes. And the dipstick is located right in the middle here, easy to check. Now looking underneath the Hyundai Sonata you can see that it has a fairly flat undercarriage here with a panel that covers up most of the engine and transmission. There is a metal panel as you get to the back there and that's to help with the exhaust heat. Now taking a look at the engine itself from underneath we do have a stamped steel oil pan instead of say an aluminum one. Now over here you can see the oil filter module. It is a cartridge style oil filter which I I don't like because these are a little bit messier and the fact that it's made of plastic means that it could potentially crack and leak after a little while I don't really like these and I prefer the metal ones it actually extends back up here to the oil cooler which is going to exchange heat from the oil with the coolant now here's something also embarrassing this car only has a thousand kilometers and we've also got an oil leak on the oil pan that means it hasn't even reached its first oil change yet so it's not like this drain plug's not tightened the leak is actually coming from up here at the oil pan that's not looking good for Hyundai. Now over here on the side of the engine we have the timing cover and underneath that timing cover we luckily have a timing chain which means that you don't have to do belt replacements every so often. Over here you have dual variable valve timing. You can see these are your variable force actuators over here. Now these are going to apply an oil pressure to the cam phases in order to vary valve timing. Now further down in front of that timing chain cover we have our drive belt setup which is a little bit interesting here. You can see down over here is where your crank pulley is. Up at the top here is where your alternator is. It's got this unique belt tensioner on here which is what's going to tension the belt. You just have to put a wrench down over here in order to get the belt off. 
Now further down inside of here, those bolts there are your water pump pulley. While it is pretty tight to work inside of there, once you get the pulley off, it's pretty easy to service the water pump. Then finally down at the bottom over here is where your AC compressor is located, mostly accessed from down below. Overall, however, it's pretty easy to access the alternator. It's right over here and it's just held on by two bolts and easy to remove and replace if required. Now here's a look at that AC compressor from underneath. You can see most of it would be accessed from underneath and you'd have to pull it down this way. Now drop a comment down below if you know what this thing does. It's driven off of the intake camshaft and it's got one electrical connector to it and I don't see any hoses here. And now we're going to have a listen to the engine. Now taking a look at some of the electronics and parts under the hood here, this is a newer Hyundai which means that you do have your fair share of cheap plastics under the hood here. A lot of the wiring components tend to have a lot of plastic on them than we used to. At least the fuse box which is located right here is very easy to get to right at the top here and everything is clearly labeled. Now the engine computer is located under the hood for a short wiring harness but I like that it's pushed back not far from the firewall as opposed to being right in front of the engine where it could get easily damaged in a collision. Now in case you were wondering the unique line that runs up the hood for the daytime running lights is a separate piece from the headlights here it starts over here and then it runs up the side and stops halfway up I wish they actually continue it along the belt line of the vehicle I think that would look pretty cool but it's just a single piece over here with the electrical plug now here we are on the driver's side just underneath the front bumper in front of the front wheel and you can see they've actually put in some sort of a computer over here so if you do get into a minor fender bender or hit a sign or something and this bumper caves in, well you're also going to be taking out a very expensive module of some sort. Now taking a look at the exhaust setup in the Hyundai Sonata, it starts over here, we've got an integrated exhaust manifold into the head that's going to bring all four ports down to one port over here where this turbocharger is going to mount to. Now the turbocharger is responsible for increasing the air flow in the intake coming in over here and that's going to pressurize it, it's also going to heat it up, that's why we have that air to air intercooler. That pressurized air is then going to get forced into the engine through the intake side and that can make a smaller engine have more power now the exhaust gases are then going to travel over here you can see we've got our air fuel mixture sensor over here and then down into the catalytic converter a little difficult to see down at the bottom here and then out over here to the flex pipe at the back here and then down through the center of the vehicle to the muffler now I like however that they've put the turbocharger on the back side of the vehicle near the firewall makes for a very easy exhaust routing to go underneath the vehicle after the turbocharger as opposed to having it in the front here and then running it down underneath the engine and looking at the the back of the engine here just above the drive axle you can see we do have an EGR system this here is your EGR cooler and valve assembly which is going to take those exhaust gases and send them back through the intake to get reburned for pollution now from underneath here you can see this is the bottom of the catalytic converter it's then going to bring the exhaust gases down over through this way here and then into a flex pipe that's then going to head underneath this subframe and then out the middle of the car now from the back here looking at the exhaust you can see from that center muffler you've just got a single pipe it leads all the way back here with an integrated muffler and a single dual outlet over here. Now of course on the end models you're going to have the exhaust split up and come to another muffler over here to fill up this empty cavity in the rear bumper for dual exhaust. They even label the sport models rear bumper with sports underneath here so you can't mix them up. And now we'll have a listen to the exhaust. With the airbox out of the way, it's easy to see where the transmission is located underneath the battery over here on the driver's side. You can see this big module over here is actually the electric motor that's going to select, park, reverse, neutral, or drive. And that's because this has a shift by wire setup. It's all electronic. There's no cable that runs to your parking hall. Now just next to the shift motor are the cooling lines that go down to the transmission cooler and warmer assembly located on the front over here. You also see that there's a plastic transmission pan located on the front of the engine. That's because the valve body sits up and down in the front of the transmission as opposed to underneath like traditional transmission. Now this transmission does not come with a dipstick but luckily we do have a fill port located over here when you do want to change out the fluid. Now the starter on the transmission is pretty easy to access. It's down below the intake over here. Seems like you got enough room to get inside of here. There's two bolts holding it on along with electrical connector and you can get it out through this part over here. Now taking a look underneath here from the transmission we've got our drain plug located over there and our fill check plug located over here. 
Now here we've got the drive axle for the passenger side. You'll notice that it's actually a big hollow piece. And if you compare that to the drive axle for the driver's side, this is actually a solid smaller piece. Now I notice a lot of these markings on the transmission mention things like two-wheel drive. So I wonder if there's an all-wheel drive version of this car coming. Come to think of it, there is a lot of room behind the oil pan here for a transfer case. And it is directly in line with the transmission tunnel. All you gotta do is move that exhaust out of the way and you could send a drive shaft going down the back. I do wonder if there is an all-wheel drive setup that's coming down the works, given that the Camry also added all-wheel drive. Now here's something a little interesting. You can see this is the transmission cooler, and this is the transmission fill drain plug over here. It slightly overlaps the cooler, and the manual actually calls for you to remove the cooler in order to access that plug when you're doing a transmission fluid change. I find like it's an unnecessary step. They could have just trimmed it or made it a little bit better. Now what's more embarrassing, this car is brand new and only has a thousand kilometers on it, and they haven't even threaded this bolt in properly. It looks like it went in twisted and it's not tightened compared to this one here which is fully tight. Not sure what's up with Hyundai's quality control. They did put a QC marker dot here though. Now looking at the steering setup here you can see the steering shaft coming down to the steering rack which is going to go to either side. There is no rack mounted steering motor here. The steering motor is actually mounted on the column. Now one thing I do appreciate that Hyundai has done under here, although they're using a stamped steel subframe, it goes all the way around the vehicle to the front. And you can see that that piece carries up to the front here and then it goes over to the front over this way and crosses over to the other side in a fully boxed frame. Now in other Hyundai Kia products they just stopped the subframe over where the control arms are and the front is left to just crush with a plastic radiator cradle in case you hit something. At least here you got a bit of structure and you got some points to jack up on rather than going all the way underneath the back of the vehicle. In addition you can see they are using aluminum front bumper rebars. Now looking at the front suspension on the Hyundai Sonata, you can see things are pretty straightforward down here. You got your sway bar over here. Down inside of here we do have aluminum knuckles. Now additionally we do have a ball joint here that has a pinch bolt that pulls into the knuckle. I don't usually like that because sometimes they get stuck and rusty in there, especially if you've got dissimilar metals. You do have an integrated ball joint, so there is no bolted on style ball joint that you could change separately. Instead you have to change the entire control arm. Now taking a look at the Sonata's front suspension, you can see you've got a McPherson strut which is nice and simple here. Now that's going to bolt over here to an aluminum steering knuckle and then we've got our inner and outer tie rods over here. Now just in front of that strut we have a long stabilizer link that goes down to the sway bar in front of the wheel center here. Now taking a look at the control arm you can see that it's going to bolt up to the subframe right here and here. Pretty easy bolts to get to, nothing in the way, as well as the back control arm bolt over here. So replacing the control arm isn't going to be too difficult. It is made of aluminum which is good to see that they've actually spent some money on developing these parts. The only thing I really don't like is that this ball joint is not really replaceable. You have to replace this entire control arm if your ball joint tends to wear out. And for those who want to swap sway bars with maybe the N-Line model, the two bolts for the sway bar is located right here. I'm surprised it's actually pretty easy to access. Overall though I think a McPherson strut front suspension suits the class of this vehicle being just an economy mid-sized car and it's going to be pretty easy to replace parts down the road when they do wear out. Now you got clearly a very nose heavy car here you can see the back wheel is just as much off the ground as the front wheel but I've got the jack underneath the mirror right up to the front here so that's where your center of gravity is pretty far forward. Now taking a look at the rear suspension on the Hyundai Sonata you can see we have a multi-link suspension back here like many other mid-sized sedans and SUVs. Now over here at the bottom you can see we have a stamped steel bed pan control arm that holds the coil spring. You can also see the tiny little stabilizer link back here and the shock absorber that also mounts to this control arm. Now from the top here you can see the stamp steel again upper control arm that's mounted to this aluminum knuckle. Now replacing the shock absorber should be pretty straightforward. You just got two bolts at the top here and then of course one bolt down at the lower control arm. Now at the front here we have a control blade style trailing arm that's going to connect up at the body over here and then over here to your aluminum knuckle using these couple of bolts here. Then finally we've got another Another lower control arm in the front over here that's going to control the toe. Now in case you're wondering the front lower control arm has a camber bolt on it to control the toe and the rear lower control arm has a cam bolt on it to control the camber. Now if you did want to replace the sway bar for an N-line model one it's pretty easy to get to. There's just two bolts that hold it to this subframe. It is a very thin sway bar and can definitely use some upgrading back here along with this really small sway bar link over here. It's got a bushing on the bottom here and a ball joint on the top here. Now looking from behind here at that aluminum steering knuckle you can see we've got some bolts here and this is the ABS wire that go to the hub which means that if you do need to replace this bearing you don't need a press to change it out. Now looking back here Hyundai's kind of cheaped out and went with a stamped steel rear end here. All the subframe components and
and all of the suspension components with the exception of the knuckle itself are made of stamped steel now they especially did that to save cost now one thing I don't like is that they've changed from the steel pipe right to the rubber pipe for the fill holes that goes down to the gasoline tank now this area has the wheel that's spinning at high speed if something were to be kicked up it could easily slice that hose or if you get something sitting on the suspension and it bottoms out it could also damage that hose they should have covered it a little bit better now, the brake setup on the Hyundai Sonata is very simple just like many new cars today it still has a vacuum assisted brake booster and a simple master cylinder there's no electric unit over here if you follow that line it goes down to your vacuum pump and that's driven off of the exhaust camshaft of this engine now those brake lines are going to travel across the firewall from the master cylinder over here to your ABS module which is what's going to be responsible for your stability traction control and any autonomous safety features that your vehicle has now speaking of autonomous safety features, at the front here under the grill we have our radar sensor inside of the emblem. Now it sticks out pretty far in the front, it's almost flush with the bumper, there really isn't no bumper in front of it. So if you come up really fast on something inside of your garage, you could probably crack it and cause some damage. Another thing is that this hood pretty much comes right up to the front of the vehicle. Many vehicles it's set back a little bit so that you have a little bit of protection in case you bump something, but in this case you could kink your hood and damage the radar sensor pretty easily. Like for example on this car the bumper sticks out a little bit more so you'd first hit that and then you'd hit the emblem and then the hood now taking a look at the front brake setup on the Hyundai Sonata things are very simple we've got a floating single piston caliper here that sits on this ventilated disc rotor that's to be expected in this class the rotor itself though is e-coated and it does have these stupid rotor screws that Honda has been using I really hate those because they can often get stripped out and stuck in there when doing a brake job now look at the rear brakes on the Hyundai Sonata nothing special here we have a solid disc rotor with a single piston piston floating caliper, pretty typical for its class and weight of the vehicle. And for the back here you can see the electronic power brake module, it's just an electric motor in here that's going to clamp these together when you put the vehicle in park automatically and it's electrical connector up here. Next we're going to take a look at the cooling system on the Hyundai Sonata. You do have your coolant tank located over here off to the side and that actually forms part of your radiator cap because this one is pressurized and the radiator itself is located underneath this plastic composite radiator support. Which I don't really like, I prefer if it's actually metal because if you do get into a collision and this cracks you have to replace the entire thing. In addition, accessing the radiator itself does require the front end to be completely removed. Now the critical cooling component is going to be your water pump which is located down underneath the alternator. It is a bit tight to access but it's possible to get it out without removing any major components. We do have your upper radiator hose that's going to come over here and go inside of the engine over here and that feeds the back of the water pump. Now, in addition, teeing off of that we do have your oil cooler which is located right here at the front of the engine Then right over here we have the other radiator hose is going to come up from the top here and that's going to be fed into the back of the engine here now what I find interesting is that this has a thermal control unit which is this plastic piece inside of this housing over here and that's going to house what's basically an electronically controlled thermostat there's a plug for it over here which is what's going to regulate the amount of coolant flowing through the engine for more efficient cooling than the thermostat could provide now while we're talking about the cooling setup the grill is pretty huge you can see directly the AC condenser and the air to air intercooler over on this side but the cutouts are super huge I can actually push my hand all the way inside of there so let's say there's a banana flying up on the road it could fit all the way through this grill and probably damage your AC condenser pretty good now the Sonata like many front wheel drive vehicles has three main engine mounts you got one underneath the battery here on the transmission side which you can't really see then there's one over here on the passenger side connected to the engine's timing cover and then there's one down below now taking a look underneath the vehicle here you can see the third engine mount attached to the transmission transmission over to the subframe. This is just a mount to prevent rocking of the transmission engine assembly when torque is applied. And that's pretty much a look under the hood and underneath the new Hyundai Sonata. Now if you ask me I think that this vehicle is well laid out in terms of things that you'll have to maintain down the road that will wear out and it should be pretty easy to work on. However I think there are some questions to be asked about the reliability of this especially with that turbo engine, the durability especially with all those plastics and the build quality with some screws unturned underneath that you'll have to consider if you want to buy this long term. Now if you are stuck in getting a Hyundai Sonata because it is a fairly interesting looking car you might want to consider the 2.5 liter engine because it is going to be a little bit more simple underneath. Although the Theta engines weren't really known for their reliability, I do have a teardown video on one of those engines linked above if you want to check that out. Now what do you think about the Hyundai Sonata? Do you think it's worth buying long term or would you return it after the lease? Make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next car review is going to be and subscribe for more videos just like this one.